Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, back with, uh, actually, I'm back really quickly here. <laughs> I was going to take a long kind of break after I did my, or a, a break at least after I did my Trend of the Corn reviews, but I figured it's been a while since uh, I did Jurassic World, like last year, so I wanted, I've always been saying I wanted to do the rest of the Jurassic Park film, so I just want to go ahead and get this shit over with and do one, two, and three in the same video. There's not really much I can say about the first movie. It's a great movie. This is going to be short reviews because there's not really much I can even say about these films. The first one is a great film. Um, stars Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum, Laura Dern. They all give good to great performances. Uh, very enjoyable movie. The CGI still holds up. Yes, there's a, a couple, maybe one or two shots where the CGI doesn't gel as well as it would today. Uh, if it was, I mean, with as it would today. But um. The movie's still great. Favorite scene is the ending with the T-Rex when he grabs those fucking raptors that are about to kill uh, Sam Neill and the rest of the group. And he, like, fucking grabs them and, like, slings them, like, right into dinosaur bones. That was awesome. Uh, they basically get saved by the T-Rex at the end. Um, any problems with the movie? Uh, some of the science or whatever you think about too hard, it doesn't really be real. It's not really realistic. Like, uh, how they made the dinosaurs. They cloned them from, like, blood that was inside of the... Uh, the mosquitoes, and they found petrified mosquitoes, they cloned them, whatever. That's a little shaky, but the movie doesn't really focus on it. It's just like, it just explains it in a decent way, and then it jumps into it, and here's the adventure. So it's really fun. Uh, any other problems? Um, uh, Really not really. Oh, well, Jeff Goldblum's character, he does some neat stuff, but then he kind of just gets took out for the majority of the movie by getting his leg hurt. That was a little little underwhelming. He should have done a little bit more. But other than that, it's this is a great film. It's a great film. One of the best films ever made, in my opinion. Um, Sam Neill is really good here. I'm a big fan, of, big fan of Sam Neill, and he's really good here. And you get cool scenes where uh, the raptors are like after him inside this uh, all, uh, inside the office building or whatever and they're uh, busting through the uh, glass and everything and one thing I love is like <laughs> they're like we're safe unless they learn how to open doors and the thing about the movies if you've seen them is you know the raptors where they're bioengineered they're also a learning animal who keeps getting smarter and the fucking raptor is like twisting the door <laughs> and the and it's like actually opening the door. I love that. And also the scene where they're after these two kids um, in the uh, pantry or whatever, in the kitchen, I mean. That's really cool. Very suspenseful. Great. Now we get on to Jurassic Park 2, The Lost World. First of all, right off the bat, the basic premise of this movie is that uh, there was a first island that the, they experimented on with dinosaurs trying to make a park before they ever even did the island from the first movie. Now that right there is far-fetched to begin with. It feels like somebody just... Pulled it out of their ass, honestly, <laughs> and forced that plot idea. Which you really don't even need that. I don't even know why they just couldn't go back to the first island, to the island from the first movie. I mean, why not? What the big deal? Uh, I don't get it. But whatever, you got Jeff Goldblum as the hero in this one. And he goes to the uh, island that was made before the island from the first movie. Bug, sorry. <laughs> before the island from the first movie. And uh, he's got to go there so he can provide photographic evidence of how well these animals are doing so it that will somehow help not get the place invaded by the government or some shit. It's confusing. But there's like a poacher team that's there who wants to uh, take the animals back to the mainland so they can open up like a zoo in San Diego or some shit. Um, it's an interesting idea. Like having two teams, one taking down the dinosaurs, that makes you feel sorry for the dinosaurs because no matter how much evil they do, they're just animals. I mean, they don't know any better. And when humans get involved, humans do know better. They know the difference between good and evil, and they do evil. So it makes you obviously root for the dinosaurs. Now you got the badass T-Rex back in the movie. He's really cool. Problems with the movie, way too many freaking characters. There's two teams, and the second team of the poachers is made up of a huge group. Uh, there's Pete Pozzleweight, I think is how you say his name. He's in James and the Giant Peach. He's in this movie. Uh, he's a great actor. I really liked him in this movie. He plays like his hunter who's obsessed with bringing down a T-Rex. Uh, he was really cool. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was so interesting that almost makes you at times wish the movie was about his character, honestly. Jeff Goldblum is good in the film, though. He does do good, but he's never great, but he does do good. He is enjoyable to watch, and I'm perfectly fine 
as a fan of letting this sequel be about his character. It didn't bother me. He is good in the film, and he has funny one-liners and comments all the time. It, other problems is there's a scene where the, just their trailer they're in, mobile home, like goes over the side of a cliff, and it takes them forever to get back up to the top. It seems, feels like this action scene takes forever, uh, and it's honestly overkill. Um, best scene in the movie is the raptors when they're all in like the long grass on the island and they're jumping and uh, like fucking one of the raptors like leaps sun like out of the grass and lands around top of this dude. It's a badass scene. Um, biggest problem in the movie, I used to love this part when I was a kid, but when they get to like back to the city, the poacher guys have like smuggled a T-Rex back there and uh, he just uh, comes to the city and it like wreaks havoc in San Diego and it's like eating people and shit. And you got a scene where there's a bunch of Chinese people like running away from the T-Rex, like a parody of Godzilla. That was unforgivable. That was so stupid. The problem, the idea of bringing like the dinosaurs to the mainland and the T-Rex like run a rampage in the city is an interesting idea, but you have to play that in a correct way. Otherwise, it will come off as like cheese ball. And Spielberg chooses the cheese ball way here mostly. Like every chance he gets to do a gag, he does it. And that really hurts the film. This ending is the worst part just because of how it's done. Um... But um, one thing leads to another, and Jeff Goldblum and Julianne Moore plays his girlfriend in the movie and managed to tranquilize the T-Rex, and uh, there's like the baby the T-Rex has, and the dude that was leading the poacher team or whatever, uh, he gets killed by the baby T-Rex and the big T-Rex at the same time, so you're like, yeah, because you're like, fuck this dude, because he's a dick anyway. Um, <laughs> one, one other thing is Vince Vaughn is actually in this movie. He plays a good guy, which was, it was cool seeing Vince Vaughn in here, but I always forget Vince Vaughn was in this movie, because it seems weird. You know, it's almost like Paul Rudd and Halloween, the uh, Curse of Michael Myers. You're like, the fuck are you guys doing in, a, in these movies? It's because, you know, it doesn't really fit what they're known for today, you know, as comedians. But, you, you know, it's still cool. I like Paul Rudd and Curse of Michael Myers, and I like Vince Vaughn here. Um, so, yeah, all in all, the second film, because of the terrible final, because of how bad it's handled, is a two-star film. The second film is a two-star film. It's an okay movie. I can watch it, have an okay time with it. It's a lot darker than the first movie. I can watch it and have an okay time with it. Uh, and there's some cool like, horror movie moments. But uh, at the end of the day, with because of the cheese ball ending that doesn't even fit the darker tone of this film for the first entire half, uh, it brings it down to a two-star film. Not bad, not great, not even good, but okay. I can put it in and watch it and be like, time waster enjoyable, you know, kind of cool seeing the dinosaurs again, nothing to write home about, but okay, so <laughs> now we're going to move into Jurassic Park 3, now with Jurassic Park 3, I'll go ahead and give my rating with this, this is another two star film, but <clears throat> unlike Jurassic Park 2, which is an okay film, Jurassic Park 3 is a passable film, this is a very sugar coated movie, it doesn't, I mean, not sugarcoat as in it's really sweet, but I mean, it doesn't feel like a Jurassic Park movie. This is basically a basic adventure movie with Sam Neill, really. Um, what I'm saying is the plot here is very paper thin. Uh, you get, uh, it's like a forced Jurassic Park movie, pretty much. This little boy gets lost on the island, and the parents, who are played by William H. Macy and Tia Leone, who was David Duchovny's ex-wife, uh, they uh, trick Sam Neill. And Sam Neill's friend Billy into coming to this island because they want him to show them around to see if they can find their son. They pretend like they're a big major, like well, William H Macy pretends he owns a big major company. And he's like, I can lot, I can write a lot of zeros on this check, Doctor Grant, <laughs> so he can get him there and you know try to see if he can help him find his son. And they they hired like some mercenary guys too to help him, like three other characters, and they're expendable characters, and they get killed really quick. And this is a problem with the movie is it's really obvious you know who's going to get killed. Uh, good points about the movie is you got the Spinosaurus. The Spinosaurus in this film is totally different from the T-Rex. Uh, one thing I didn't like is that the Spinosaurus killed the T-Rex because it, the Spinosaurus did not earn the right to kill the T-Rex in this franchise. Even though he is, he is cool. The Spinosaurus is cool. Fun thing about the Spinosaurus in this though is he doesn't even behave like a real dinosaur. He doesn't. I mean, he acts like a serial killer. This is like, the, unlike the T-Rex, which would just like chase after people, but then when it lost them, it just, you know, quit. This thing just chases after you through the whole movie. It's like the Michael Myers of dinosaurs, and they just give it like this rage demon look in its eyes, and it's like it's out for the kill. They should just gave this damn thing a knife. Uh, <laughs> it's like the slasher dinosaur, and that's how they portray it. But uh, he's still cool. I, I gotta admit, I like that angle. 
Uh, big pro biggest problem with the movie is Sam Neill and Laura Dern's characters are not even together. They have her married off to somebody else when they set that relationship up for like the whole first movie. And that was a big part of the first movie and they just piss it away here. I have no idea who, who thought of that. Why would you think that was a good idea if you was writing this movie? That is beyond stupid. I mean, honestly, that was the dumbest part of the film. Uh, other than that, when they're on the island, you get some decent action scenes. This film is actually more enjoyable for the majority of the film than Jurassic Park Two was. Uh, but once, it, but it, this the ending to this film is way stupider and weaker than Jurassic Park Two. It's not as cheesy, but it's fucking stupid. <laughs> The Spinosaurus, like you get the raptors are like, I like how they made the raptors smarter in this movie. Like they, you know, continued the evolution. I thought that was cool. And the raptors are like setting traps so they can catch them and shit. That was really cool. They took, they did take it too far when the raptors got like this dude on the ground. It reaches down there and grabs the dude. It's got its mouth on him and it like freaking snaps the dude's neck. And I'm like, okay, serial killer dinosaurs. I mean, with the Spinosaurus, like I bought it. But with the raptors like snapping necks like that, I'm like, hey, okay. <laughs> that's a little hard to swallow but um, um they get chased through the movie get some cool raptor action scenes where they're chasing after him and this has probably the second best action scene of the franchise where uh the predactyls like attack him inside this giant bird cage they attack the characters it's really cool they end up finding the boy he teams up with them he ends up he actually saves sam neill's character with the last smoke bomb he has which was kind of neat um they team up together and they're going to rescue the kid they're going to get the hell off the island the the boy billy who was with sam neill he stole one of some of the raptor eggs which is why the raptors were chasing after him so to make up for it he sacrificed himself to save the boy Billy and lure the predactyls away from him, or so we thought he sacrificed himself, even though we see him clearly die. He's been pecked to death and bleeding everywhere. Uh, but uh, he goes off a waterfall too, and but at the end of the movie, he just pops up randomly alive, and it's like, wait, what? How? It's like almost. It's like you get the feeling that they, he was supposed to be dead, and at the last minute they said, we need to PG thirteen. I mean, we need to PG this bitch. And just they just brought him back to life for no reason at the end, just to show he was alive, even though he was clearly dead. It makes no sense. It's really stupid. It's a cop out, a big cop out. Uh, but that's one of the best scenes in the whole franchise that Predactyl attack. <clears throat> we get to the end. The Spinosaurus attacks him out in the water. Cool scene. Uh, it's like it's basically like a slasher movie. It's trying to eat them when they're in, in, under the water and everything. It pretty much crashes their boat. Uh, William H. Macy pl uh, climbs on top of this crane to distract it. It's like hitting the crane and shit. And uh, Sam Neill shoots it with a road flare. Before that, he's like calls Laura Dern on the satellite phone. He doesn't tell her his location. He just says, the river. <laughs> and that's why we'll get to the end of the film. Uh, <clears throat> and then we get to the end. Every, the main like group cast survives. Even Billy survives, which he shouldn't have survived. And that's a cop out. That was stupid. But William H. Macy, T. Leone, uh, Sam Neill, even the Billy guy who should have died, they all survive. They all survive. So it plays it safe. Um, but uh, So they get to the ending, and they're out on the beach, and then this dude pulls up, and he's like, Dr. Grant, is that you? And it's like, so they came to rescue them. Laura Dern called them. How did they know where he was? How did she know? How did they find out where he was? How did they know he was on this island? I mean, because he's not even on the island from the first movie. He's on the island from Jurassic Park 2. So it's like, how the fuck did they know where he was? But And another thing, like the whole U.S. friggin' army shows up, man, to save Sam Neill. And if you pay attention in the movie, before they even go, well, I mean, while they're here, William Mitch Macy tells them that he called the American embassy to get help from the government to rescue his son who's on this island. And they just basically said, on you, William H. Macy. They didn't even want to do it. So I'm like, the, the government wouldn't save a, a boy, a little kid, from being killed here. But the entire National Guard will come in to save Sam Neill's character. What? <laughs> That's retar retarded. Retarded. Uh, then you get on the plane, or their helicopter they're flying off in. It ends with John Williams' music. It's cool. Um... And it just ends like a really sugar-coated way. I like get everybody smiling like, eh. <laughs> um, I like Sam Neill in the movie. He does good. I enjoy him. He is a good actor. He is a better actor 
than um, than Jeff Goldblum. Uh, so that was cool seeing him in the movie. Um, but yeah, all in all, this film, I don't, I mean, it's clear that they didn't have much of an idea for this third film. They just really wanted to have one. So they just fast-tracked it. But this film is enjoyable for the majority of it, more than part two. It's more entertaining. But um, because the second one was so much darker, uh, which I'm fine with, a more mature Jurassic Park, but this one just has more fun, fun entertainment to it, especially the, the birdcage part in this film with the predactyls is more fun and a better action scene than anything in part two. And part two is still a better movie because the ending, the final of this fucking movie is the worst I have ever seen <laughs> with the entire National Guard showing up. And before that, it already jumped the shark a little bit because Dr. Grant uses a, like, homemade, sculpted raptor, like, vertebrae or whatever, uh, voice box. And he talks to it and actually communicates with the raptors, telling them, like, take the eggs. Here they are. See you later. And I just picture the raptors, like, talking to each other, like, so let's get these sons of bitches. Yeah, your ass is mine. <laughs> That's just because they communicate with each other in the movie. But yeah, all in all, it's a passable film a passable film like i can put this on have it in the background while i'm playing chinese checkers or some shit or a video game and i can just like glance over every now and then at a big action scene with spinosaurus which is which are there they are cool and be like yeah that's kind of cool and then just glance back and play my game whatever the shit <clears throat> so yeah it's a passable film uh so we go from great first one okay the second one this one is a passable film. It's just kind of there in the in the franchise. Uh, and then we got Jurassic World, which I thought was great. But the first half of Jurassic World, I cannot stand. But once it picks up with the action and the predators and everything like attack the actual park, when the park actually gets attacked, uh, that is a blast. And then when the raptors are like working with the mutant dinosaur, that was a blast. And then at the end of it, when the T-Rex and the raptor team up to Fuck the mutant dinosaur up. That was a blast. Jurassic World uh, is the best sequel in this franchise. Honestly. <clears throat> so, yeah, all in all, great first, okay second, passable third, great fourth. So, I will see you guys again with whatever comes next.